I'm Carlos Fresquez, uh, an artist who is an in indigenous background. So that I, I'm comfortable with defining myself and as a mestizo or blend or mixture, but definitely indigenous. I consider myself a mestizo or a hybrid. I, I know I'm of indigenous uh, background. Uh, many of the nations are also known, which I don't really care for necessarily as tribes, but uh, I do know I am of uh, the Isleta people in uh, the Pueblo just south of Albuquerque. That I do know, but there's other nations that I just really don't know where I'm from. But I also know I'm of uh, European ancestry. Uh, so uh, there's even German and uh, Spanish, but I always con primarily consider myself Know, mestizo, you know, that's probably the clearest term, or Chicano to me even says that it's, it's a, uh, uh, it, it's a uh, indigenous word from, that comes from where the uh, native people call themselves in central Mexico, the Aztecs, we know them as Aztecs, they call themselves Mexica, so the word Chicano comes out of that word, the Chicano comes out of the word Mexica, so that I, I'm comfortable with defining myself and as a mestizo or blend or mixture, but definitely indigenous. Oh, it definitely mix it up. I did this exhibit called All Mexed Up because I just use so many different materials. I'll use uh, from uh, children's toys, books, I've used installation where I've included uh, just objects uh, from indigenous pottery to uh, mass-produced uh, religious imagery, as I said, books, toys, uh, and then material to paint. I've used uh, from tar, inks, washes, you know, different uh, materials there, uh, oil, acrylics, and uh, but it's primarily mixed media. You know, I also do printmaking, screen printing. Some of the works I'll share with you, you know, they're uh, screen printed uh, with paints, so I'm using paint. Cultural background, I grew up here in Denver and uh, I had this awakening. It was 1969, I was 13 years old and was demonstrating. I, there was a group called the Crusade for Justice and the AIM, the American Indian Movement. And I remember going to some of these uh, walkouts, they called them, out of my junior high school. Uh, I was 13 again, and I would, uh, a bus would come by from these organizations, pick up students that wanted to protest out of school, usually with no permission from your parent, you know, and you would just go. And I remember marching from what we call Lodo now, Lower Downtown, Denver, all the way up to the Capitol where we would hear uh, different speakers uh, awakening everyone, you know, telling us, hey, there's inequality. Uh, this was just four years after the approval of the civil rights, you know. And so here I am, 13, to not really know what's going on, but being part of a sea of indigenous peoples uh, uh, from all over and just wanting to, uh, and, and awakening to create change. And so that was probably the, the pivotal point for me, like, who am I? Questioning. So as I started seeking, it's like I would go to uh, the elders. I go, go to reservations. I went to the Ute Reservation, for example, and I met this wonderful man there. And he, uh, he told me, uh, he says, You're, you probably were raised Catholic. I said, yeah. He says, well, he goes, you then have a trinity, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. I said, yeah. He goes, well, we as indigenous claim, uh, we have uh, our trinity, which is to know who you are, 
you have to know where you've been to know where you're going. So that was another factor, it was like, you know, it made me realize, you know, and this was probably 20 years ago, and it was like, I realized I need to see really who I am. So I started creating these works that were much more trying to become in tune with my indigenous self. And, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a product of our culture, our society here, but, you know, a U.S. citizen. So it was a, a, a combination of, of a, a U.S. culture and indigenous uh, culture. The, the piece behind me is uh, done probably three, four years ago. And it's uh, an homage to uh, a pop artist, Jim Dine. He's from the uh, East Coast. And in studying his work, and, and again, I, as I just mentioned, I, I'm really a product of U.S. culture. I came in at a time when pop art was flourishing, and I really liked the idea of taking popular culture and, and making more and something with it. Uh, and he would use images that I use uh, like the skull, the heart, for example, you know, what's behind me. And, but he would do them in a, in a pop way. I try to take and honor him. This is an homage to him. He has since passed away. But to honor him and, uh, and show the skull as a symbol of rebirth uh, and not a final or an end. And then the heart as a symbol of living and life and within uh, Hispanic culture especially, uh, the heart, uh, the, the, the uh, Spanish came in and conquered the Aztecs with the heart. They, the, the, the Aztecs would sacrifice and remove the heart from the chest. The Spanish brought in the heart from uh, Christ, which was the, he would sacrifice for you, so you no longer had to sacrifice yourself. Uh, I am not a strong Catholic. I'm not really a good Catholic. But uh, I was raised that with that, and to me, this is life and death. Truly, you know, the the work, the the heart having a lot of uh, activity, and paint it with a lot of emotion and and, uh, and, and motion, and then the skull as uh, just a clear face in you, direct, looking like looking death in the face. You know, nothing to fear, because we're all there. You know, we're all eventually gonna make it there. So, like me, maybe a little closer than others, you know. But it's like, uh, it's just, a, it, it's that, you know. It's life and death and, and honoring those that have come before. And I would take these uh, images uh, from newspapers, magazines. My mother had a, like a birthday card and I would cut these up rather crudely, you know, at three or tear them. And then when my uh, mother would make uh, tortillas in the morning, she'd get the, the water, uh, the corn or the flour, whatever she was using, and she would make a paste. And I would glue these together. Uh, so right away, you know, I came in like with, uh, with what I still work with to this very day. You know, pop culture, my culture, the tortilla, which is indigenous food, and I'm using the, 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 uh, what, what gives us life, the, 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 the corn, the flour, which feeds us, and I use that to adhere pop and cultural images, whether it be a fragment of a newspaper, with, and I don't even know what the newspaper would have, what, what, it could have been an image of, of war was going on at the time, it could have been the president, I don't know, you know, I really don't recall, but I do remember adhering something together and string and tying stuff together, and I'm three years old, you know, so it's like I was creating something, making something that was cultural uh, uh, and, and, and important to me at the time, and it, it never really stopped. This, to this very day, I'm still doing that, as you see in my work. I'm still collaging, I'm still dealing from culture, I'm still adhering and putting things together that sometimes are, are separate and juxtapose uh, uh, elements of what it is to be a, a, a citizen of the U.S.